Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into Smart Money here for week number 10 where I go over the games that the public is overwhelmingly betting on and then I look at kind of who are the prof professionals picking. Those are the Smart Money picks. That's the second half of the video. But this is just the general public. The overall money, where is it going? Uh, we've got Appalachian State, a lot of people in on them, minus three, 91% of the money in on Appalachian State at Coastal Carolina. As always, I give my own personal grade for each of these. I give this one a C. I really don't have a strong feeling about it either way. Personally, I would stay away from this game. I thought Coastal Carolina was a fraud last week, and then they shut me up. Uh, but Appalachian State is a decent team this year. They always are. UMass at UConn, the under 40. This is a Friday night game. I love this bet. Two bad offenses. It's a weeknight, 7 o'clock matchup, 94% of the money on the under. I would agree there. Oregon State plus 4.5 at Washington. This line has moved. It was plus 3.5. Now it's plus 4.5. And, and I understand the value on the newly ranked Oregon State team. Personally, I give this a C plus because I do think Washington's going to win. But if you do get Oregon State plus four and a half, it at least gives you a little bit of wiggle room there. They might lose by three. They might lose by four and you still cover. Number four, Iowa at Purdue, the under 41. So this line has moved significantly. At the beginning of the week, it was 43 and a half. It's all the way down to 41, 98% of the money on the under. We are all fading Iowa and they're over. I think Iowa games have gone over three straight times. That is a trend that's going to break, we would assume, because they have such a bad offense. And then Purdue, the problem with Purdue is they really lack playmakers. I see this game being a lower scoring, maybe 24 to 17, maybe even you know lower than that type of game. Uh, number five, Ohio State minus the 38 at Northwestern. 95% uh, of the money on the Buckeyes to cover. Northwestern, the worst team in the Big Ten, one of the worst power five teams. Ohio State, seemingly a lock to at least score 44 points every week. I like this. My only concerns would be Ohio State's motivation level and the overall wind gusts that are expected there in that game is a noon start time. Apparently, wind gusts of around 25 miles per hour, but I do like the Buckeyes possibly to win this game something like 52-7, to 55-7, and cover the 38. Next, we've got Florida at A&M. The over 55 and a half, 95% of the money on the over, and I give this a B plus. I think Texas A&M with their new freshman quarterback, they're rejuvenated. Florida, for as bad as Anthony Richardson has been throwing the ball, They've still generated stuff on offense. This could be a sneaky shootout game between two extremely underwhelming teams whose offenses have improved as the season's gone on. So I would say I agree. I like the over in that game. Kentucky at Missouri, 99% of the money in on the under 40 and a half. I don't really have an opinion on this in terms of the over under. That's a small number, 40 and a half. What I'll say is Will Levis, I expect a bounce back game from him. I expect Kentucky to win this game. They're just, I believe, one and a half point favorites. I like Kentucky. Georgia Tech at Virginia Tech, the under 40 and a half. I love this bet. Um, two bad offenses. Bottom line, two bad offenses. Don't overthink it. We could be looking at a 13-9 type game. Marshall minus three at Old Dominion. 98% of the money on Marshall to cover. Um, I think Marshall's extremely fluky. Or not fluky, inconsistent. I'll say that. So I'm really not betting on Marshall football at this point. Southern Miss minus two and a half versus Georgia State. So Southern Miss, you know, they're normally a good defense. They're a solid team. Um, they di I think they did win last week against L Louisiana, if I have that correct. So Southern Miss minus the two and a half. Yeah, Georgia State has actually shown some things recently, but I do like Southern Miss at home in that one. Middle Tennessee at Louisiana Tech, the under 63. I do think there's very good value here. Both of these offenses extremely streaky, but recently, especially Louisiana Tech, the home team, they have not been good on offense. 63 is a decently tough enough number to get to. 
I'll take the under in that one. Baylor at Oklahoma, the over 61 and a half. So guys, I said in my best bets video, the over under in this game, I think was like 58. It has been bet up significantly. Uh, so that's why I give it a B plus and not an A. You know, if you're getting 61 and a half, that's not great value considering where it was earlier in the week. UAB plus one versus UTSA. Love UAB to win this game outright. Uh, they're at home against, I know UTSA is decent. I'll take UAB to get back on track. They're due for a win at four and four. Memphis plus three and a half versus UCF. Um, I understand this 100%. Memphis is at home. Three and a half is an attractive number. You can still lose by a field goal and cover. UCF has a quarterback issue. Their starting quarterback has a concussion. I understand it, but I do like UCF football. So I'm going to give that grade a C. New Mexico is plus 16 and a half at Utah State. So 16 and a half is a pretty tough number for a team like Utah State to cover. New Mexico isn't horrible. I mean, they're not one of the worst you know, um, teams in FBS. They're bad, but they're not one of the worst. I could see them covering the 16 and a half. Penn State minus 14 at Indiana. So the main issue, it, it, looking at it like, at how good Penn State is compared to Indiana, you would think Penn State will win this game on the road by 21 at least. Uh, but Penn State, the week after Ohio State games, tends to struggle. We will see. That's why I'm weary on it. I give it a C. Michigan State at Illinois, the under 41 and a half, 99% of the money in on the under. I'm concerned about Michigan State possibly getting shut out. And we know Illinois does not have, you know, a very good offense. They're a major run first team. So I would understand the under there. West Virginia at Iowa State. The under 50, so Iowa State's defense at home is no joke. The under 50 seems pretty valuable, even with West Virginia scoring a decent amount on offense. Washington State at Stanford, the over 50 and a half. Anytime, you know, you bet it over in a Stanford game, especially when Stanford is at home, I would be wary about it. I understand Washington State has a decent offense. Stanford's quarterback is an NFL prospect. I get it. I would just be wary about that one. Oregon, minus the 31 and a half at Colorado. It's just tough. 31 and a half is a lot. I understand Colorado is the worst power five team, but still, it is a lot to cover. Next, we've got Tennessee plus eight at Georgia. I love it. Let's not overthink it. Tennessee's been good this year. Uh, you know, plus eight. This game, I think, is going to be very close. Make Georgia blow them out. I don't think they will. There's value. Kind of similar to the Tennessee-Alabama game where Tennessee was also plus eight in that one. FIU plus 21 and a half at North Texas. So FIU has really turned around their season. They've been a competitive football team. You know, 21 and a half, that's a lot. With the, with the momentum that they have, I could see them covering that. Texas State plus the one and a half at UL Monroe. I just have no read on this game. I'm going to pass on talking about it. Houston at SMU, the under 66 and a half. So there are a lot of analytics and metrics that think there is significant value in taking the under in this game. But the reason the over-under is 66 and a half is because Houston's offense is finally performing how we thought they were going to perform at the beginning of the season. I'm wary of it because I like Houston's offense. We will see. UNLV at San Diego State, the under 47. I love it. You know, this seems like an overreaction to San Diego State having a decent offensive performance last week. This game, it's a mid, you know, middle of the day game. I see. Actually, you know what? I think UNLV is at home. I think I got this wrong. I think it's San Diego State at UNLV. I'm going to have to look that up. I don't know. Either way, I like the under. Texas minus two and a half at Kansas State. I just don't see the value here. I like The problem is people love Texas because they almost beat Alabama. They probably should, be, should have beaten Alabama. I'm just not interested. It's just not like if Texas was plus two and a half, maybe. Um, I'm just not seeing the value. I mean, Texas just lost to Oklahoma State a few weeks ago. Oklahoma State gets blown out by Kansas State. I know there's a lot of parity in the Big 12, so it would make sense for then Texas to beat Kansas State, but I'm just not interested there. Auburn plus 13 at Mississippi State. I'm not interested. Auburn with the coaching situation. You really never know how teams are going to react once their head coach gets fired. 
It's a roll of the dice. Either they'll play dead or they'll come out with fire. I'm not interested in playing a 50-50 card there. Florida State minus 7.5 at Miami. I don't like it. I like Miami plus the 7.5 at home. Mario Cristobal is desperate. Florida State has shown some cracks. I know they, you know, the quarterback, Travis, just had an unbelievable game against Georgia Tech. But overall, Miami plus 7.5 seems like pretty decent value. It was 8.5 and, and it got bet down. James Madison plus 7.5 at Louisville. James Madison is a very hard team to get a read on. Earlier in the year, they were great. They got ranked, and then they've just lost two horrible games. So I don't really know about that. And then Fresno State minus the 27 versus Hawaii. This line opened at 24. If you got Fresno State at 24, that was the value. It's been bad up, but I still like Fresno State getting their starting quarterback back to cover that one. I think we just have a few more here. Michigan at Rutgers, the under 45 and a half. So I understand people think Michigan's offense, based off of their week last week against Michigan State, uh, isn't good. But I could still see Michigan scoring 42 points here and, and going over. I'm really not interested in betting the under 45 in that game. Arizona at Utah, the over 68. So the thinking here is Cam Rising will be back for Utah. Arizona is your typical team where they score a lot but they allow a lot. So I understand if Cam Rising is back to go in on the over. And then probably the bet of the week, Hawaii at Fresno State, the under 62 is, is an auto lock. It is the best bet of the week. Um, but now here it is, guys. The actual smart money bets. These are the bets the professionals are making. You know, the way I find these bets, if there's a lot of money on one team in terms of the tickets, but the overall cash is going in on another team, that means the general public normally is going one way and the Sharps are going the other way. So that's how I find these bets. UTEP at Rice, we're going with the under 47 and a half. You know, don't have much analysis on that game. I think it is tonight on Thursday night, so we will see. Duke at Boston College, the under 47 and a half. Of course, Boston College... I believe they have a quarterback issue. They have a decent defense at home, so I understand that. Oregon State plus the four and a half at Washington. It is a value bet. The public's on it. The Sharps are on it. It'll be interesting to see how Oregon State does. Ohio State minus 38 at Northwestern. Everyone's in on the Buckeyes here. We don't think Northwestern is going to score above seven points. And if that doesn't happen, you would think Ohio State, I believe it's been seven straight games. They've scored 44 points or more. They're probably going to keep that streak alive unless there's some crazy weather. Texas Tech plus nine and a half at TCU. I really don't like this bet, but these are, you know, this is, these are not my bets. These are the smart money bets. So we'll see. Texas Tech plus nine and a half. Florida at AM, the over 55 and a half. We talked about that. I like that. Virginia plus the seven and a half versus North Carolina. So I could see the value here. I, I think Virginia was 10 point underdogs at the beginning of the week, and it's just, it's gotten bet down. It, it's due to North Carolina's bad defense. And this could be a game where Drake may, in a noon spot on the road, maybe he struggles. He's due for a game where he struggles, I believe. Maybe it's this one against Virginia. We've got Georgia Tech at Virginia Tech, the under 40 and a half. I've talked about I've talked about that. I love that. Both bad offenses. Temple plus three and a half versus South Florida. Uh, South Florida has one win, and Temple is at home. Temple is not good, but I guess there is value on Temple. Middle Tennessee State at Louisiana Tech. We talked about this, the under 63. It's it's simply too many points for that game. Uh, number 11, New Mexico at Utah State, the under 43 and a half in that one. That's a midday game. I agree with it. Memphis plus three and a half versus UCF. So, you know, we talked about this one as well. Three and a half is a really attractive number for Memphis at home facing a UCF team that's a little hobbled right now in terms of their quarterback. Oklahoma State at Kansas, the under 64 and a half. So this is a big 12 game. I don't really have an opinion on it. I think it could go either way. So I don't have a strong opinion. FIU plus the 21 and a half at North Texas. It's just too many points. FIU is playing better. I know North Texas just had a crazy game, a crazy blowout win. But FIU is the value plus the 21 and a half this week. Syracuse at Pittsburgh, the under 48. It's understandable. Syracuse is a team that... They've got a decent defense, but a really bad offense, so I could see this game going under. Personally, I love I love Pittsburgh to win this game outright. 
BYU at Boise State, the under 54 and a half. I don't have an opinion on this. I think it could go either way. Fresno State minus the 27 and a half versus Hawaii. I agree with that, especially with Fresno State getting their quarterback back. James Madison at Louisville, the under 52 and a half. I would probably disagree with that, but I don't know. I, I mean, James Madison is such a hard team to bet on. Louisville it seems to be kind of fluky. Their offense is really good one week, really average the next week. Last week, they were really good. Maybe this week, they come back down to earth. Colorado State at San Jose State, the under 45. I agree. Um, those games tend to always go under. And then Liberty at Arkansas. How about the over 64? Liberty does tend to get into shootouts, and Arkansas does have a horrible run defense. Um, that is an interesting non-conference matchup. So guys, just one more time, these smart money bets, these are not my bets. These, This is me looking at all the research, looking at all the data. Where is the actual money going? Not the overall tickets because someone could have a $5 ticket. Someone could have a $5,000 ticket. In my opinion, that's not the same value. I'm going to value the person that bets $5,000 a lot more than five than $5. So these bets are based off of where the money is. Like for example, maybe 83% of the tickets are on UCF minus three and a half, but 94% of the money is on Memphis plus the three and a half. What that tells me the people that have actual money are betting on Memphis. The general public is betting on UCF. And that's that's just an example of kind of how I'm doing this. So that is how I get the smart money bets. And, and that is going to do it for the official smart money bets here for week number 10, guys. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.